questions for reflection. In our first reading, we heard a portion of the 14th chapter of the prophet Jeremiah proclaimed. It's important to listen to this reading in its fuller context. Judah has turned from the Lord and is experiencing the consequences of their wrong choices. That's what sin is, a rejection of God, a misuse of freedom, making the wrong choice. One of the consequences is a great drought. But even in the midst of such travail, the people do not turn and repent. They listen to false prophets who tell them they will not be consumed by all of this, but be assured peace. The Lord sends the prophet Jeremiah to denounce the false prophets. It is Jeremiah's words following this denunciation from which this portion of our first reading at Holy Mass is taken. The line before our first verse is the Lord saying to Jeremiah, you shall say to them this word, eliciting a response from them. And in the last half of the reading, the prophet tells the people what the Lord is looking for in response from them. Quote, Yahweh, we acknowledge our wickedness and our ancestors' guilt. We have indeed sinned against you. For your name's sake, do not reject us. Do not dishonor the throne of your glory. Remember us. Do not break your covenant with us. Can any of the nation's feudal ones make it rain? Can the heavens of their own accord give showers? Are you not the one, Yahweh our God? In you is our hope, since you make all these things." End quotes. There are still false prophets in the midst of God's people in our own day. Some who would tell us that the time of struggle which the church and the nations are undergoing is not as a result of a rejection of God and His law and loving plan. Some who would encourage us to seek a kind of separate peace and turn away from the true God to new forms of idolatry. We must not listen to them. Then as now, we must repent and beg the Lord's mercy and intervention. The words of David in our responsorial psalm taken from Psalm 79, continue to teach us how to repent and find our way back. And I quote, Do not count against us the guilt of former generations. In your tenderness, come quickly to meet us, for we are utterly weakened. Help us, God our Savior, for the glory of your name. Yahweh, wipe away our sins. Rescue us for the sake of your name. May the groans of the captive reach you. By your great strength, save those who are condemned to death. And we, your people, the flock that you pasture, will thank you forever, will recite your praises from age to age." End quote. We need to live our lives for the Lord, quick to repent when we sin, and always ready to praise. In the Gospel passage for today's Mass, taken from the 13th chapter of St. Matthew, Jesus has dismissed the crowd and is explaining the parable of the weeds in the field and the seed. We are his contemporary disciples. The images of seed which is sown in a field speaks to every one of us in the way we live our daily lives. St. Jose Maria Escriva reflected on this fact in a profound homily, which he concluded with this hopeful insight, and I quote, May our Lord be able to use us so that placed as we are at all the crossroads of the world, and at the same time placed in God, we become salt, leaven, and light. Yes, you are to be in God, to enlighten, to give flavor, to produce growth and new life. But don't forget that we are not the source of the light. We only reflect it. And that's from Friends of God, paragraph 250. We are both the soil and the seed in these agrarian parables. The living word has been sown within us, so we must cultivate the ground of our hearts in order to be transformed by grace and more fully reflect the image and likeness of God. We are called to grow in holiness and reflect the risen life of Jesus Christ to a world waiting to be born again. Then we are the seed placed in his holy blood-stained hands, being spread into the world which he still loves so much that he sends his son through the church, the body of Christ, of which we are members. The world which was created through the second person of the Blessed Trinity, the Word of the Father, is now being recreated in and through the incarnate Word, Jesus Christ. And we are living seeds of His kingdom, being spread in the garden of the world.